If you go outside and you're walking through the woods, most people know what a deer is. That's no big mystery or what a squirrel looks like. But what most people don't realize is uh, the Appalachian Mountains are actually one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. Um, and so when you're walking through the woods, you're walking over thousands of different slime molds and fungi, different insects of all shapes, sizes, colors, and textures. And a lot of these organisms are so small that they're easily overlooked and it doesn't really do them justice. They're part of the ecosystem there. Uh, many times they're crucial parts of the ecosystem. The UPike Biology Department recently purchased some macro photography equipment. We're using right now a Canon T5i uh, DSLR. We have a Cognosys stacking rail. We also have a Canon MPE 65 millimeter macro lens. It's a specialist lens. It can go from one to five times magnification. Uh, so that really allows us to really zoom in on our subjects. That we can get really close to a lot of different organisms. This camera gear allows us to really capture um, these tiny you know, slime molds and fungi and insects, capture them in an aesthetically pleasing way and bring some notoriety to them. It allows us to show the anatomy of some of these organisms. It allows us to show some of these small parts that otherwise they'd have to look in a textbook for. And a lot of times the textbooks either don't have very good photographs or they're line drawings. So it's hard for students to relate. Or, you know, we, maybe we have an insect in our entomology collection, but sometimes these rare insects, we might only have one. And so instead of the students handling and possibly damaging our only specimen, we can make scientifically accurate pictures and then they can use that to study by. You know, people see some of the photographs and it always kind of shocks me. They ask me where I took that picture. And, you know, we conduct five weeks of field labs in the fall semester with the freshmen. Um, and all five of those are conducted at Bob Amos and most of those are on the walking trails. So I'm not going to some distant land or you know, some hot spot. I'm, I'm at the city park. You just gotta slow down and, and know where to look and what to look for. And I think that photography and biology feed hand in hand because a good biologist needs to know his subject and a good photographer also needs to know their subject. And so when you combine the two, you really can, it can find these organisms a lot faster if you know what you're looking for. Outside of Bob Amos, we have the Brakes Interstate Park in the region. There's so, so much untapped potential there. And every time I go there, I'm blown away by everything I see. You know, Pike County is in a very prime location to discover new species. Um, you know, when people hear about, oh, you know, scientists discovered a new species, they always assume that, um, you know, it's in South America or the, the heart of Africa. Um, and that's, that's really not the case. Scientists discover new stuff all the time, and, and a lot of time it's in places you would never expect. And so certainly diving into some of the fungi and slime molds, especially this summer, we found several species that hold the potential to be new to science. One of them is the zombie ant, Ophiocordyceps unilateris is its name. And it differs a little bit from the tropical version. In the tropics, the fungus actually will mind control an ant. It will infest its body and take control of its bodily functions. And it will direct the ant up a tree onto a leaf. And then the ant will bite down. The mushroom will finish off its host and produce spores that will potentially turn the colony into more zombie ants. Here though, we actually found a black carpenter ant infected with the fungi uh, at the Brakes Interstate Park. But the difference here is the ant doesn't actually bite down on leaves, it actually bites down onto the bark of a tree. And while that may not seem significant, if you think about it, why wouldn't the ant bite down on the leaf? Well, in the fall here, our leaves fall off. In the tropics, that's usually not the case. So uh, the potential for it to be a new species is actually quite high. Um, and, and this goes with any, any group of organisms here that aren't heavily studied. Spiders, insects, slime molds especially, fungi. It, it always amazes me how many students, they see the pictures and they ask a bunch of questions, which is what I hope. And so there's a line that we have to walk as a scientist and a photographer. Obviously we want our pictures to be aesthetically pleasing, um, but we don't want to uh, take away from the organisms. We don't want to try to manipulate the image. And so hopefully the images that, that people see are accurate and that they instill a little bit of curiosity in them. Uh, this is from a stag beetle. This stag beetle here is actually found in Harold, Kentucky in 1934. Uh, 
So a student collected this. Uh, you can see all the way down into the individual pieces of the eye, um, flecks of scales from other insects that maybe it brushed up against. And this was a stack of about um, 200 images. Here we have another example that a student collected. This one, I believe, was done in 1938. Uh, this is a tree hopper. So this thing is maybe twice the size of a flea. So very, very, very tiny. And you can see we've stacked this. It's about 150 shots stacked together. Um, this one was worked on a little bit in post. So here's the original image. You can see that there was a pin here. Um, for scientific purposes, it's, it's often useful to have a physical specimen which requires them to be pinned or stored in a vial. However, uh, some people don't like seeing the pin, so we just go ahead and remove it um, so it doesn't detract from the insect. Certainly, we do other things besides insects. This software can be used for anything. Here's an example of a jumping spider that was collected by a student. This is a single shot from a student, and the student brought the spider in. We have gas that we can actually put the spider to sleep with, and so we gave it a little bit of gas to put it to sleep put it on the uh, reflective glass, and then took the shot when it woke up. The spider was released completely unharmed. Um, you know, anytime we can, we can take the picture of alive organisms, uh, that's what we choose to do. Now is, is an incredible chance for you, Pike, to step up in the natural history side of things and contribute. In Eastern Kentucky, pick a direction and go, and you could discover something. You can make an impact. It's just finding the, the right students with the right mindset to do it. And we have them, and, and we do a good job of, of sending them out there in the community. Um, but I think we could, we could always do better. We could always push ourselves to do more. You know, I have the students for, for around three hours a week. Um, so I can only teach them three hours a week. Uh, but I think what the photographs allow me to do is kind of cultivate some curiosity with them. You know, maybe they didn't like insects before. If I can make a student a little bit curious about the natural world, then outside of my three hours, they're going to put their own time in. And if I can foster that, they're really going to get a lot more out of their education than just the three hours they got with me.